Hello everyone. My name is Ashley and I'm a dietetic intern and I wanted to welcome you to the blood pressure self-monitoring program nutrition seminar. So today's topic is going to be a little bit more specific and we're going to talk about how we can reduce our sodium intake. So this is just um, a brief overview of what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to go over some nutrition blood pressure facts. Um, we're going to go over what sodium actually is and how we can reduce our sodium intake. And then we're going to go through some low sodium meal options. And then we're going to go through how we can choose the healthier option um, out of specific meals. And then the low sodium lifestyle. Why does it work? We're going to talk about that for a little bit. So nutrition choices have a direct impact on blood pressure. Um, these nutrition seminars address various aspects of eating that we can and should be mindful of to stay healthy and effectively manage our blood pressure. So the 2020 Dietary Guidelines for Americans recommend that everyone consume less than 2300 milligrams of sodium per day. For um, the persons who are at risk for developing heart disease, which includes people over the age of 51, African Americans, those who have high blood pressure, have diabetes, or have chronic kidney disease, the American Heart Association recommends to limit sodium intake to less than 1,500 milligrams per day. Reducing your sodium in take can have a direct impact on blood pressure. So it's, it's really, really important and it can really help with blood pressure management. So nine out of 10 Americans actually consume more than the recommended amount of sodium. The average American consumes about 3,700 milligrams of sodium per day, which is quite a lot of sodium. So excess sodium intake can cause the body to retain fluid and that can oftentimes um, cause those symptoms of like shortness of breath or having it um, be hard to breathe because you're retaining so much fluid. Um, excess sodium can also be um, hard on the heart um, and it makes blood pressure management, management much more difficult. So who should be most concerned about their sodium intake? Um, as I mentioned before, those who are at risk for developing heart disease should be most concerned, and that includes people over the age of 51, African Americans, and those who have high blood pressure, diabetes, um, or chronic kidney disease. So um, this group of people actually accounts for about half of the U.S. population. Um, so it's important to establish healthy nutrition and lifestyle habits, regardless of your health status, to promote health and prevent chronic disease. Um, so really everybody should be mindful of sodium, not just the people who are at risk for developing heart disease. So now we're going to go over um, how we can reduce our sodium intake. Um, so first, we're going to go over what sodium actually is. Um, it's actually a common misconception that salt and pure sodium are the same, th same thing, and that's not necessarily true. Um, sodium is a mineral that the body needs for fluid maintenance. So sodium bonds to water and pulls it into the bloodstream. Um, sodium is also important for nerve impulses as well as muscle function. But the body really only needs about 500 milligrams of sodium to function properly. Um, so common table salt, um, which is what we're talking about when we refer to salt, um, is actually sodium chloride. About 40% of the weight of sodium chloride is sodium. Um, and about 90% of our sodium intake actually comes from the sodium chloride um, or the table salt. Um, so like many other minerals, our, our body needs them to function, but too much of one thing um, can definitely be harmful. So consuming too much sodium leads to excess sodium in the bloodstream. And then when there's excess sodium in the bloodstream, that can uh, lead to excess fluid that's pulled into the bloodstream. Um, 
So that means that the total blood volume in the body increases, um, which essentially means that there's more blood flowing through the body. And because there's more blood, that means the blood pressure increases. So another way to think of this is the analogy of a garden hose. So when we turn on the water in a garden hose, there's a certain level of water pressure that's in the hose. And then when we turn the water up, the water pressure in the hose increases because there's more water flowing through the hose. So this increased pr uh, pressure is the same thing that we see within our bodies in terms of blood pressure. So let's give you a little bit of a better visual on sodium. Um, so we saw earlier that our bodies only need about 500 milligrams of sodium to function properly. So how many teaspoons of salt do you think would amount to 500 milligrams of sodium? Less than a quarter teaspoon of salt. So a quarter teaspoon of salt um, is about 575 milligrams of sodium. Then we have half a teaspoon of salt is about um, 1,250 milligrams. And then we have a three quarters teaspoon of salt, um, which is about 1,725 milligrams. And then one teaspoon of salt is that recommended 2,300 milligrams of sodium for the general population. So one teaspoon of salt is really not that much when you think about it. Um, so the recommendation is to try to consume less than 1,500 milligrams of sodium per day. Um, which is about less than three quarters of a teaspoon of salt per day. So limiting yourself to less than 1500 milligrams of sodium is really, really not that much salt. So where does those, our salt actually come from? So about more than 75% of, so, of the sodium that we eat comes from processed foods. And this can include things like chips, pretzels, um, those salty snacks, um, bread. There actually is quite a lot of sodium in bread. And I think that's um, one of the areas where we most commonly get our salt from because especially when you're out to, de out to eat and they put those dinner rolls on the table, like you don't just eat one. So um, bread can be kind of um, sneaky in that aspect because it does have a lot of salt. <clears throat> um, condiments tend to have a lot of salt, especially those um, like ketchup and mustard. Um, so that's something to watch out for. Um, cheese naturally has a lot of sodium in it. Um, so just be mindful. Um, and I know like when you go to the deli, you can't really see the nutrition label when you get like the fresh sliced cheese. Um, but like the pre-packaged sliced cheese, um, you can look on the nutrition label and pick the cheese that has the lowest amount of sodium. Um, processed meats, um, so those are things like pepperoni, um, kielbasa, sausage, um, hot dogs. Those have so much salt in them because it's used as um, a preservative. Pizza can have a lot of salt. Um, so when you think about it, you have that the bread as the crust, you have the sauce that could potentially be hiding some sodium in there, and then you have the cheese that gets put on top, which as we just learned, cheese naturally has a lot of sodium in it. And then not even, not to mention the things that you put on top, like your pepperoni and your sausage. Um, so pizza can also be a sneaky culprit of our added sodium. Um, canned goods definitely have a lot of sodium um, because it's used as a preservative. Um, one way that you can reduce that is to rin rinse your canned vegetables or your beans um, before consuming them. And then baked goods also have a lot of um, hidden sodium, sodium in them. Um, another way we get salt is from adding salt to foods after they're done cooking. Um, and then there's some things that have naturally occurring salt, like fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, but the amount of uh, sodium that's in those um, fresh fruits and vegetables is very, very, very little. All right, so what can we do to reduce our sodium intake?
Ooh, lost my place here. All right, so we can eat more fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, fresh frozen, no salt added um, canned vegetables are a really good way to reduce our sodium. Um, if you're unable to get the no salt added um, canned vegetables, um, as I mentioned, you can rinse the canned vegetables or beans to reduce the sodium content. Um, use fresh poultry, lean meat, and fish instead of the processed versions, um, like the breaded fish or the breaded um, chicken that you find in the refrigerated section or um, like the frozen versions, those can have a lot of hidden sodium. Um, limit your sauces, ready-made mixes, and instant products. Um, there are a lot more items on the market um, that kind of cater to low sodium diets, um, especially things like spaghetti sauce. Um, there's a lot of brands that are now doing like reduced sodium or no salt added um, versions of their sauces, which is really nice and makes it a little easier. You can use spices to flavor your food instead of adding salt. Um, so there's one brand that I really like, um, it's called Mrs. Dash. Um, every like spice blend that that brand makes has no salt in it. Um, so it's, it's a really good option to help flavor your food. Um, there's flavors like garlic and herb. Um, they have they have a new one that's like the everything bagel seasoning but without the salt added um they have like an italian blend um there's a few flavors that they have there's also another brand called perfect pinch um they have some uh, no salt added versions as well um, and then when you're dining out you can ask um for no salt on your food so um, they don't add any when they're cooking and then, of course, reading the nutrition labels to compare sodium levels and choosing the option that's lowest in sodium. That's a big one, um, and that can be really helpful um, when shopping. And then, as I mentioned, you can buy the low sodium, the lower sodium, reduced sodium, or no salt added options when they're available. So what are these claims um, that I just mentioned? What do they actually mean? Um, so food labels um, can have many claims on them related to sodium content. And if it has one of those claims, it means that it's regulated. So when you read the label, it's important to look at serving size and how many servings there are per package. Um, some packages can have anywhere from two to four servings in it. Um, so each claim has a quantitative meaning behind it. Um, so we're going to look at some of the most common ones. Um, so sodium free means that there's less than five milligrams of sodium per serving and contains no sodium chloride, which is that table salt that we mentioned. So very low sodium means that there's less than or equal to 35 milligrams of sodium per serving. And then low sodium means that there's less than or equal to 140 milligrams per serving. And then reduced or less sodium means that there's at least a 25% reduction in the um, sodium per serving than the usual sodium level of the original product. So there's a lot of um, like canned soups that have the 25% um, percent less sodium than the original version. Um, and then there's light. Um, for low calorie and low fat foods um, that contain at least 50% reduced sodium per serving, it'll have um, the light claim on it. So I just want do want to reiterate that it's important to look at the nutrition label because these are all per serving, not per container. So if a container has more than one serving and it says low sodium, like I'll use soup for example, usually like the canned Campbell's soup have about two servings per can. So if you're eating the whole can and it says it's, it's reduced or it's low sodium, 
I'll use that one because that's got a number. So a low sodium can of soup really has 280 milligrams per can because there's two servings in that can, if that makes sense. All right, so now we're gonna kind of switch gears, look at some um, sample meals and see where we can find some of the hidden sodium in them. So for breakfast, we have whole wheat toast with peanut butter, banana blueberries, and a cup of milk. Um, so what are the sources of sodium in this meal? Um, one of them could be within the whole wheat toast. There could be salt in there. Um, there could also be salt in the peanut butter. Um, so one way to reduce the sodium, um, you could uh, switch out the peanut butter for a no salt added version of the peanut butter. And for lunch, um, we have quinoa salad with rinsed black beans, um, scallions, corn, red peppers, mangoes, and avocados with a cup of milk. Um, so there's not really too much hidden sodium in this meal. Um, it's a pretty um, low sodium meal to begin with, especially when you rinse those black beans. Um, there's a lot of fresh uh, fruits and vegetables within it. Um, so that's a good hearty lunch option. Then for dinner, we have grilled chicken seasoned with rosemary and lemon with some brown rice, broccoli, and a cup of milk. Um, so one of the areas where some sodium could be hidden is if we added salt um, to the water when we're cooking brown rice. Um, I, that is one of the most common ways that we're adding sodium to our diet. Um, so just taking the salt out of the water when we're cooking can make a big difference. And it doesn't really make that big of a difference in flavor either. So that is just something to think about when we're cooking. Um, all right, so now we're gonna go through, I'm gonna give you two meals um, or two options per meal and we're gonna pick which one um, has the lowest sodium. So for breakfast, we have a breakfast sandwich with one egg, one slice of cheddar cheese and turkey bacon on whole wheat English muffin with a cup of water. Or we have yogurt with oats, blueberries and a sliced banana with a cup of water. So out of those two options, which one do we think is gonna have um, lower amounts of sodium? So it's definitely gonna be the yogurt with all of those fresh um, fruits and the oats that's definitely going to be your lower sodium option. Then for lunch, we have a Greek salad with spinach, tomatoes, cucumbers, low fat feta cheese, kalamata olives, pepperoncinis, and some Greek dressing with a cup of water. Um, our other option is a whole wheat wrap with tomato, spinach, black beans, avocado, olive oil, and balsamic vinegar. Um, so given those two options, which one would be the lower sodium version? And it's definitely going to be the whole wheat wrap um, with all of these great vegetables. And then olive oil and balsamic vinegar is a really simple way to make some really good salad dressing. And then for dinner, we have grilled chicken with brown rice, steamed broccoli, and a cup of milk. Um, or we have a turkey burger with lettuce, tomato, onion, ketchup, mustard, and Swiss cheese on a whole wheat bun with um, baked sweet potato wedges and a cup of water. So out of those two options, um, which one is going to have lower amounts of sodium? It's definitely going to be the grilled chicken with steamed broccoli, some brown rice. That's definitely going to be um, the lower option. Um, so now let's go back and see how we can kind of improve the, the meals that we didn't pick. Um, so let's start with breakfast. We have the breakfast sandwich with an egg. Um, what we could do is we could keep that. Um, but use a low sodium cheese. Um, we could add some spinach um, or we could just have the whole wheat toast with no salt added peanut butter and add an apple for some fruit on the side. Um, for lunch, we keep the Greek salad um, with spinach, tomatoes, cucumbers. Um, we can um, kind of cut the feta cheese in half, use less cheese, um, do half the olives, um, take off the pepperoncinis because those um, are just so high in sodium um, and then keep the olive oil and balsamic vinegar dressing. 
Um, or if this is something that we're getting at a restaurant, we could um, ask for the dressing on the side um, so that you can control how much you put on it. And then for dinner, for the turkey burger, uh, we could do an open-faced turkey burger with lettuce, tomato, onion, um, low sodium condiments, or we could just take the condiments off, um, no cheese. Um, we can keep the baked sweet potato wedges, um, but not add any salt on them. Um, or we could do a whole baked sweet potato, um, or we could substitute another vegetable like broccoli or something on the side with um, a cup of milk. Um, so just something to note, um, burger buns just in general tend to have a lot of sodium. So that's um, why I recommended like the open face burger. Um, so just something to keep in mind. All right, so why reducing sodium works. Um, so it does establish healthy nutrition and lifestyle habits. Um, reducing your sodium promotes health and can help prevent chronic disease. It can also re reduce food retention, um, which can help with weight management and blood pressure management, which those two also kind of go um, hand in hand as well. And then ultimately you'll feel better. Um, reducing your sodium can help eliminate bloating and weight gain associated with that fluid retention, and it also makes it a lot easier to manage your blood pressure. So basically, overall, reducing sodium intake contributes to a healthy and more nutritious lifestyle. Uh, so normally, at this point, we could go through a discussion, since we're on Zoom and we're working, I oppose these questions for you to think about on your own time. Um, so think about what you have eaten today or even yesterday. What kinds of foods have you eaten that um, would help to reduce your sodium intake? Um, and how could you change some of the food choices um, so you're taking in less sodium throughout the day? Think about after you've eaten something that is really salty or after a day of consuming a lot of salt, how do you feel? I know I feel uh, not so great <laughs> when I eat something that I know has a lot of salt in it because you get that that bloating and that fluid retention. Um, think about all the kinds of low sodium foods that you can purchase at the grocery store. After learning about reducing your sodium intake and what low sodium means on a label, what can you do to ensure that you aren't taking in too much? All right, so physical activity and blood pressure management. Um, so physical activity can definitely help with managing your blood pressure. Um, evidence has shown that regular physical activity can lead to a significant reduction in blood pressure and improve other cardiovascular risks. So moderate physical activity has also been proven to decrease blood pressure in, um, in those who have high blood pressure who are less responsive um, to medical treatment like medication. So just 30 minutes of physical activity a day, um, equivalent to just a brisk walk or something like speed walking um, six to seven days a week um, may result in better management or a reduction in one's blood pressure. Um, just something I do wanna note, um, if you don't wanna do like a brisk, fast paced speed walking, you can do um, like a casual stroll. Um, I would just recommend doing it for uh, more like 45 minutes, um, just so um, with the slower walking, you're going to walk for more time to get that same benefit of a faster paced walk for less time. Some resources um, that we use to kind of um, like back up what we're saying about physical activity. Um, some studies that we looked at that um, kind of uh, correspond with um, how physical activity can lower your blood pressure and help manage it better. All right, so that is all I have for you. Um, I just wanted to remind you to self-monitor your blood pressure and track your blood pressure at home and attend the office hours, get in contact with your um, Healthy Heart Ambassador. Um, I am 
also available if you have any questions. My email is at the bottom of the screen. Um, I'm also available for one on one counseling um, or if you have um, any questions about other topics or issues, um, they don't have to be related to blood pressure. Um, just shoot me an email and we can set up a Zoom or um, we can go back and forth through email if you prefer um, with any, any questions related to anything diet related, I am available. All right. Okay. Thank you, everybody.